Here we all are, waiting for new information on Breath of the Wild 2, when Nintendo decides to drop a prequel on us out of nowhere. And not only is it a prequel to the original game's story, it's another entry in Hyrule Warriors. But Age of Calamity feels like something special. A way for Nintendo to fill in the gaps of what happened 100 years ago and how Calamity Ganon took over Hyrule. It's sure to be a downer of an ending, but the journey to it should be fascinating. Plus, making it an entry in the Warriors franchise helps make this war feel like, well, war, with Ganon's forces attacking on Moss. But this is Zelda we're talking about, and it's always possible to dive deeper. So we're bringing back the old analysis machine to see what secrets and hidden details we can find. Let's find out what happened all those years ago. The trailer begins in a similar manner to the memories from Breath of the Wild, with the focus gradually sharpening as we watch scenes from that game. It makes the moment that Ganon's influence disappears and we see Hyrule Castle in all its glory all the more breathtaking. This isn't anything new, but it goes a long way to making Age of Calamity feel like another chapter in the Breath of the Wild story. And of course that means Link is here, as we soon see him in the full soldier's armor set and wielding the soldier's broadsword. While this appears to be a simple introduction to Link, there's a lot more going on here as we can see the boots of other soldiers, meaning he's nothing special. Yet. But that's obviously about to change. We believe this scene ties into one a little later in the trailer where King Roam is addressing the troops. Though we don't see Link in the crowd, there's little doubt that he's somewhere down there. Besides Link though, we see some variety amongst the soldiers, including ones wielding spears and others with a plume in their helmet, signifying a higher rank. We believe that this lineup is twofold. It's meant to prepare these soldiers for when they face Ganon's army and serve as an introduction to Zelda herself. After all, there is a scene where she walks from the darkness of the castle into the light. Perhaps Rome is already searching for the hero reborn. And that is significant because unlike the memories in Breath of the Wild, Link does not begin with the Master Sword. He's a normal soldier which, oddly enough, is quite similar to his origins in the original Hyrule Warriors. But it's not like this is a new origin for him. His father was a well-regarded member of the Royal Guard. Still, it's great to see that we'll be learning about Link and Zelda before even the memories from the original game. There's a lot of character development to build toward, including Link and Zelda becoming closer and, of course, recruiting the champions. But that will come soon enough because we believe this address by the king is cut short by the arrival of Ganon's minions. A scene shows a look at the sacred grounds, where Zelda held an awkward ceremony at Daruk's suggestion that transitions into a full-blown battle. But even before that, there's a moment where we see Ganon's forces heading toward Hyrule Castle. And we do believe that this takes place around the same time as the previous scene, as the sacred grounds can be spotted amongst the trees on the right. However, what's interesting is that this isn't the same exact view as in Breath of the Wild. Hyrule Castle and Death Mountain appear closer, suggesting this isn't a one-to-one -one recreation. So that begged the question, will Age of Calamity be as open as Breath of the Wild? It's not entirely out of the realm of possibility, as Dragon Quest Heroes 2 did feature a large interconnected world to explore. But no, that won't be the case for Age of Calamity since the official Japanese website revealed parts of the UI for the game, including the map. So while it will be a level-to-level -level structure, the maps themselves are much bigger than what we saw in Hyrule Warriors. Not only that, they appear to be much more intricate in terms of layouts with paths intersecting quite often. Looking closely at the map, we can see a few more elements at play. In the one featuring Zelda, there are three arrows denoting characters, yellow for Link, blue for Zelda, and green for Mipha. It's very likely players will have the ability to quickly swap between these three characters at will, a feature that returns from both Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition and Fire Emblem Warriors. Otherwise, we can see that the three yellow nodes mark the current objectives, while the red lines likely indicate walls or barriers. Perhaps completing the goals will open them, though they mostly seem to be preventing ally NPC units from joining the fight. This is all similar to previous Warriors games, and that applies to units as well, with captains having a darker outline, while the diamonds likely indicate keeps that can be taken over to shift the flow of battle. Finally, the UI shows the returning special meter and hearts that represent the character's health. This is better seen in Link's screenshot where the special meter is full and can be activated with a press of the A button. But Link also has one less heart than Zelda, indicating that this level takes place earlier. And in fact, we believe it is the first level of the game. After all, there's the sacred grounds again. 
So let's go all the way back to where the camera pans forward past the grounds as soldiers rush forward to face Ganon's minions while cannons fire and blow Bacoblins sky high. As the camera continues, we can see one lone soldier actually following the path as he unleashes a three-hit combo on a group of Bacoblins. A slash to the right, a leaping diagonal swipe, before a spin that sends the Bacoblins flying backwards. This is of course Link, as he appears more clearly after the cannon explosions to face down against a Moblin. And it's a great touch that the Moblin not only knocks away Hylian soldiers, but Bokoblins as well. Even a hundred years ago, they had no regard for their allies. But here's the thing about this sequence. We believe that none of this is gameplay until the moment the camera settles behind Link as the Moblin lets out a yell. This is a cutscene that really dives into the chaos of the battle and dynamically shows how Link is courageous enough to put himself in the middle of it, facing the most daunting foes. It's a transition into the first level to get players ready for the fight and keep the action high. And this is proven from the gameplay image as Link only has 5 hearts. Even that is significant though as Hyrule Warriors started players with 10 hearts with a max of 45, consisting of 3 rows. This could indicate that health won't be as plentiful this time, and two rows could be the max. After this opening bit of the trailer, it shifts to Zelda looking at the Sheikah Slate with Mipha nearby. Link is there as well, though he's quickly blocked from view by the two ladies. What's truly interesting though is that Link does not have his champion's tunic on. He's still dressed as a soldier. Even more significant is that Mipha does not have her champion's cloak on either, meaning she is not a champion yet. As we said, this takes place before they're even recruited. What we're not sure of though is if Zelda and Link are specifically there to recruit Mipha, or if they're investigating the divine beast, Varuda. We think it's likely the latter. After all, they're absolutely in the Zora's domain, and Zelda seems more concerned with the Sheikah Slate than Mipha. In fact, Mipha specifically comes over to look as Zelda appears surprised by what's on the screen. It's possible she discovered Valruda and perhaps Mipha will become a champion once she realizes her connection to it. That said, based on the Zelda screenshot showing the UI, this seems to be an early level as well as she only has 6 hearts. We just wonder if Mipha becomes a champion before or after the battle that takes place here. Perhaps this is how she's truly recruited to the cause. Continuing on, we see a fight between Link and Rivali, likely near the Rito village. If we had to wager, this seems to be the first encounter between the two. After all, like Mipha, Rivali isn't wearing his champion's scarf. But the big question is, is Rivali a boss fight signifying a sparring match between him and Link? Or is this simply a cutscene to establish their rivalry? Rivali certainly does seem to have the advantage as he caught Link from behind with his great eagle bow, while Link doesn't even have his usual soldier's shield. Personally, we hope the two can have an actual fight to show why Rivali has such a rivalry with Link in Breath of the Wild. In the next new scene, we see Link toss a remote bomb into a group of blue bokoblins, which seems simple enough, but there are a lot of elements that flash by in a short amount of time. For one, these are blue bokoblins, meaning that enemies will increase in strength as we progress through the game. It's nothing too surprising, but it's still a confirmation. Secondly, despite Link using a remote bomb, there's no sign of a Sheikah Slate in his hand. But this may have already been explained by Nintendo in their Age of Calamity press release where it's mentioned that players can equip runes. These could act as a replacement for the items in Hyrule Warriors so that each character can use them in addition to their main weapon. Finally, when the bomb explodes, it also catches a red barrel in its crossfire, which is why we can see the red explosion amongst the blue blast radius. But it isn't what caused the smoke. That actually comes from the Bokoblin's fort. The wood splinters and blasts away, and just before the scene shifts, we can see the fort begin to fall. But that begs the question, are these forts the same as keeps, or are they something different? And how destructible are the environments in the game? Can everything be destroyed, or only certain objects? We don't really have the answers, but we're absolutely curious. Continuing on, we next see what appears to be the beginning of Ganon's takeover as his signature red miasma begins to surround the castle, indicating that this is toward the end of the story. But what's easy to miss is a scant few frames where Link, Zelda, and who we presume to be a younger Impa. We know from Breath of the Wild that Impa was a royal advisor and helped with relic research. That said, we still don't know what her role will be here. Is she simply an NPC that helps characters power up their abilities? Does she act as Zelda's aid? Or could she actually be playable? 
We do know from dialogue with her sister Pura that they played a role in placing the injured Link in the Shrine of Resurrection. Of course, that could mean that this is Pura instead of Impa. We're not completely sure because we never see her face. That said, considering Link in Zelda's clothes, this is almost certainly the night that things go wrong for the heroes and Link finds himself injured and Zelda finally awakens to her powers. The question is, will the final confrontation between Zelda and Ganon be the end, or will there be an epilogue with a perhaps happier conclusion? We'll have to wait and see, of course, but for now, the attack does seem devastating and overwhelming. A brief moment is shown of Zelda reacting to the darkening clouds around her before Guardians begin spilling out of the four spires that Ganon erects around Hyrule Castle. Just seeing how many spawn so quickly is enough to make anyone despair and demonstrate how Link and the others lost in this final battle. The trailer then backs things up as we see King Roam inside Hyrule Castle, specifically the sanctum where Ganon was eventually found in Breath of the Wild. Here he seems to be addressing Zelda as Link and Impa kneel nearby. Though we don't know what's being discussed, the body language indicates that Roam is giving Zelda a task, and considering Link is still in his soldier gear, we believe she is being told to gather the four champions, or at least the Divine Beasts. Next up is a contextless scene of a series of cannons being fired during Twilight. There's no clear indication at all of where this takes place, so it's meant to once again ramp up the feeling of war. Now, it is possible that they're firing on the cursed enemies rising from the ground as the sky is a similar color, but again, we can't know for sure. What we do believe is that this is the first introduction of the cursed Bokoblins, Moblins, and Lozalfos in a level. And considering the ruins of a town can be seen behind them, perhaps they were defeated previously in an earlier battle and returned at night to continue their rampage. It's hard to say for sure, but it would again demonstrate just how relentless Ganon is at this time. It's then that we finally get back into the action as the trailer reveals that not only are Lynels in the game, but Zelda is playable as well. Interestingly, the Lionel is completely alone, which could mean it's considered a boss in the same vein as the giant bosses from the original Hyrule Warriors. But even those had smaller enemies around them, but not here. So what's the deal? Well, either way, Zelda is once again in Zora's domain, as this likely takes place around the same time as the earlier Mipha cutscene. Perhaps Zelda and Link offering aid to Zora's domain is what convinces Mipha to become a champion? After all, a later scene shows that the Zora really aren't doing that great against Ganon's forces. But really, we're here to see Zelda fight, so let's dive into that. This is the only time in the trailer we see her in battle, but it's quite clear that she uses the Sheikah Slate as her primary weapon. It makes sense that she hasn't tapped into her magic yet, and as far as we know, hasn't learned to use another weapon. She's a science girl at heart, so it only makes sense. Going through the frames, we see her touch the slate and activate the yellow rune that emits a small glow. She then swings it around with all her might, which is what unleashes the stasis on the Lionel at the last moment. We can even see the Sheikah symbol emit from the slate in this moment. But that's it. The smallest of teases for how she'll fight. Unless we look at the screenshots Nintendo released. One provides another look at Stasis in action, and this time we see it actively harming the Lizalfos. This means Stasis either only actively hurts smaller enemies, or the basic strong attack causes enemies to pause in place, while weak attacks build combos that cause damage. It's hard to tell for sure with only screenshots, but Zelda isn't limited to only Stasis, as another screenshot shows her wielding Magnesis, once again near Zora's domain based on the surroundings. Amusingly enough, she's using it on the familiar metal boxes to smash it into a group of enemies. But this does lead to another question. Do the boxes spawn out of nowhere as part of a combo, or does the player need to be near one to use it? After all, some of the screens clearly show these metal crates scattered around the battlefield. Speaking of which, we can see a gate in the distance of this image, which could explain the barriers on the map from the UI screenshots. Either they're what open up when completing the missions, or they mark keeps held by Ganon's forces. Continuing on, we see Zelda using the remote bombs, and it's a much different beast than what we saw from Link. Rather than just one, she tosses at least nine of both the spherical and cube varieties. We don't see the full explosion in the next screenshot, but this feels like the finisher to a combo. It's also similar to the bombs from the original Hyrule Warriors, though we don't think this is an item in Zelda's case. That's more likely the Link version of the remote bombs. We also have to wonder about what village Zelda is in right now. It's not Castletown, as the roofing is brown here rather than blue. 
It also doesn't resemble any other village from Breath of the Wild, meaning it might be an entirely new place that's destroyed during the war. This could even be the site of the cursed enemies rising from the ground. But let's return to the UI screen featuring Zelda as it also shows Cryonis in action. Kinda. They're certainly here, but they're not being used in any obvious way, so we don't really know what they actually do. However, we do think we have an idea on how Zelda works. If the metal boxes spawn from nowhere when using Magnesis, then that will be the basis of Zelda's weak combos. Cryonis, Stasis, and Remote Bombs serve as strong attack finishers. But if the metal boxes don't spawn, Stasis may be what's used if there aren't any nearby, which then sets up the other combos. The bombs could be a special attack, but we can't say for sure. We just think Zelda switching between the different modes will serve as her fighting style. Naturally, Zelda and Link aren't the only playable characters as the trailer next shows us Mipha in action. She's taking on a Guardian as she rises into the air on a plume of water before launching herself at it with her signature light scale trident, sending it hurtling back. It's a great display of power, but perhaps not something she can do at all times. If we take a closer look at the Guardian, it's possible to see that it's already been damaged. Several limbs have been severed, which could mean that this attack is specifically a weak point smash from the original Hyrule Warriors, indicating the return of the mechanic. In it, the weak point gauge would appear when the enemy left themselves vulnerable. If it was depleted, the smash attack would be performed for extra damage, which seems to be the case for this Guardian. But this scene is significant for another reason. Mipha is fighting a Guardian. That does not happen until Ganon begins his full takeover of Hyrule, and at that time Link, Zelda, and the champions were all in the Laneru region, which this area does resemble. We believe that this level is the champions fighting through a horde of enemies in order to make their way to their divine beasts, which places this before Zelda and Link are running from the castle with Impa. We'll get to why they might be there soon enough. For now, we next see Urbosa in combat as she faces off against a Yiga Blademaster while Yiga foot soldiers surround her. There are other Gerudo fighting as well since this is Gerudo Town being attacked, but we can also spot a few Hylian soldiers. There aren't many, and considering the rules on men in the town, perhaps these are all female soldiers? It'd be a nice attention to detail. Otherwise, Urbosa pulls off a last minute dodge similar to the mechanic in Breath of the Wild, indicating its return. The attack flurry is likely there as well, as Urbosa charges in with her Scimitar of the Seven and Daybreaker Shield. The Scimitar is electrically charged as well, indicating that Urbosa's Fury will, unsurprisingly, make an appearance. But this also serves to make her fighting style different from Link's. Finally, we notice that one of the stalls in the background is destroyed, though we don't know if it was already like that. If not, it could provide further evidence that certain structures could be demolished during combat. We get a small break in the action as all four champions and Link are lined up together, looking over what appears to be something fiery, based on the embers that are spotted flying by. It's Rivali who first steps forward, another indication of the cocky bravery that he exudes. The question is, are they facing down the divine beast Varudanya as the next scene indicates? We see the same embers around it along with the Tower of Ganon's minions, but that's it. Varudanya isn't even corrupted by Ganon at this point as it's glowing blue. So it's quite likely that after recruiting all of the champions, they work together to tame each of the divine beasts. Daruk is the next to show his skills as he takes on a Black Hinox in what appears to be the Akala Citadel. It's slightly different to how it was in Breath of the Wild, but it is a hundred years earlier. The walls are huge and there's even a gate behind the Hinox. What's really interesting though is that Akala fell after Hyrule Castle, unable to defend against the onslaught of Guardians. It's doubtful that this is that battle, but it will go a long way in showing just how devastating Ganon was. The fact that they still lost is something kind of inconceivable, especially with how well Daruk is handling that Hinox. We don't see much, but he does use his boulder breaker to create columns of magma around the monster before bursting them with a clench of his fist and a smile. The sheer theatrics of it all make us think this could be Daruk's special rather than a weak point smash. Finally, we see Rivali taking on a group of Black Bow Coblins. He attacks from the air, firing a spread shot from his bow, before unleashing a row of bomb arrows along the ground. The quickness of it, along with the lack of dynamic angles, indicates that this is simply a normal combo, with the bombs mainly acting as a finisher. 
but this does provide a hint of how Rivali's combat will work, with him possibly using normal arrows for weak attacks, while the strong finishers utilize either the bomb, fire, lightning, or ice arrows. Maybe his specials could even bring out the ancient arrows, making for a high-flying and fast-hitting character. It's then that we return to Link, and though we don't see him in gameplay, we do see that he now has the champion's tunic and the master sword. But the bigger question is, who is he fighting? They're using either the Thunder Blade, the Great Thunder Blade, or the Thunder Spear, though we can't tell which from this angle. It could just be a normal enemy, but the angle makes this appear to be a much bigger encounter. So either it's an important enemy, or it's a significant moment where Link is protecting someone. Let's take this moment to see more Link gameplay though, as some of the released screenshots show more of what he can do. The first shows that he can perform his aerial bow attack that presumably slows down time, but this creates a couple questions. The first is in regard to Link fighting a guardian. He's still wearing his soldier's armor, meaning that he hasn't obtained the Master Sword yet and become a champion, but the guardians don't rampage until Ganon's final attack and takeover of Hyrule Castle. Now this could be a non-canon extra moment, or it could indicate that some of Ganon's influence will be felt before his final push. We really aren't sure. However, we are pretty confident that Link using his bow here is not part of a combo. If we look at the Guardian's limbs, we can see that some are severed, especially the one at the forefront. That means this is likely Link's weak point smash, which feels pretty appropriate. But what part does the bow play beyond this smash? Well, that's a good question, as another screenshot shows Link using it on the ground, sending a volley of arrows against a group of enemies. So is it a part of some combos, or is it an item in the same vein as the original Hyrule Warriors? We think it's the latter, considering Link still has a sword and shield at his back. The screenshot also confirms other returning enemy types that have yet to be seen, including Choo Choo's and Blizzrobes, along with the Ice Breath Lizalfos variation. Next, we see Link bash through a group of Lizalfos while riding his shield, so shield surfing does return. But again, is it part of a combo, or is it a context-based attack? After all, Link is on a hill, so it being context-based makes sense. And based on the evidence we've seen so far, we think a key tenet of Age of Calamity will be using the environment for unique attacks, much like how it worked in Breath of the Wild. It's a small but fun way to bring in those ideas and make them work in a warrior's title. Returning to the trailer, we get a look at just how sad this game could end up being story-wise, as each of the four champions are seemingly facing their final battle against the Blight Ganons. First is Urbosa, who falls to her knees, but the background is very much like the interior of a divine beast. Mifa is inside as well, but with a blue mist as she steps back, uncertain. Daruk is using his protection to hold off an attack that appears to be made of pure heat. And then there's Rivali, who straight up takes a hit from a purple energy beam. We can even see feathers flying off of him. Now, it is worth noting that Windblight Ganon fired blue energy beams, but we still think this is him. Rivali's even outside with rain pouring, which, while inconclusive, does match the boss arena of his Divine Beast. Now, whether we'll actually play these fights against the Blights, we'll have to see. It's then that we return to Hyrule Castle as Link and Zelda run toward it before a blast hits the nearby wall. For just a few frames, we can see the telltale blue laser that indicates a Guardian's attack, so it looks like Link will have to take it on or keep running. We said before that they were in Lanayru when Ganon initiated his attack. Well, it's likely that Link and Zelda return to the castle in an attempt to stop Ganon and save the king. After all, by this point, the champions have returned to their divine beasts, so they all think they're taking the steps to stop him, when in reality, they're falling into his trap. Whatever happens, the two are forced to retreat with Impa, as we saw earlier, while Ganon's miasma envelops the castle. And sure enough, we see a still thriving Hyrule Castle and Castle Town covered in Ganon's influence while his four pillars surround it. Even more ominous is Calamity Ganon's victorious roar as the Blood Moon rests behind him, creating what could be one of the most depressing sights in all of Zelda. A Ganon who's won, and we see his corruption take hold. The main bulk of the trailer ends here, but there is one more scene of Zelda saying she needs to protect everyone. This is brand new dialogue, which confirms that the game will be voiced, though we still don't know to what degree. Still, it's great to likely have everyone back in their roles. But here's an even more important thing to note regarding Zelda. This isn't when she awakens to her powers while running with Link. She's inside a building, and though we don't see much of her dress, she herself is not as dirty. We believe this is after Zelda left the Master Sword with the Great Deku Tree and went to seal Ganon by herself. 
It's very possible we're looking at her final moments of freedom before waiting a hundred years for Link's return. It's heartbreaking in that fact. And that leaves us with the artwork that serves as the trailer's last image, and also the future box art. There's one obvious aspect that everyone is talking about, but let's talk about everything else first, including the visage of Vod Naboris and a horde of Guardian Skywatchers. Really, with all the enemies we saw in the trailer, we think it's entirely possible that every single one from Breath of the Wild will make an appearance in Age of Calamity. The only enemy types we didn't see were Keese, Octorox, Guardian Scouts, Stone Peblets and Taluses, and Moldaga. Of those, only Keese seemed like the type that wouldn't be a good fit for the game. But let's talk about the internet's new favorite character, this guardian shaped like an egg that's standing alongside the champions. We have no idea what its role will be, but if we had to guess, it's likely a kind of pet or assistant to Zelda. She does love ancient technology, so having a little guardian join and help her does make sense. The question we have is if it's meant for something outside of gameplay, or will serve as another method of attack for Zelda during combat. It's impossible to say right now, but this little guy does appear in the trailer. He's hard to spot, but if you look at the scene where the king addresses Link, Zelda, and Impa, we can spot him right next to Zelda. Considering the chronology of this scene, which we believe is after the first stage of the game, it seems this guardian will be with Zelda from the very beginning. Again, we don't know exactly what it does, but we want to know more. However, that's everything we could find in the reveal trailer for Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. While not much gameplay was shown, the sheer story potential in relation to Breath of the Wild has us absolutely excited. And it won't be long until we get more info as the next update is coming September 26 as part of Koei Tecmo's Tokyo Game Show presentation. They'll be showing off 50 minutes of new info including gameplay, character intros, and more. So naturally, we'll be there to cover it all. We also want to give a special thanks to Triss of Source Gaming for helping us compile the notes for this analysis, but of course, let us know if we missed anything in the comments below. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on The Legend of Zelda and other things gaming.